Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee who's probably going to get a tumor in his brain or his anus before the end of this episode, a one Zach Stat Pearson. Today, I'm joined by the newest serial in the aisle, a Saturday morning original, a one DJ Milk Sauce or Cereal Sauce. Yeah, dude, shouts out to the weather for being 45 out and yet it's uh, the sun is nowhere to be found. I hate it here. <laughs> and of course uh i'm joined by the living tiniest legend at least i think they might be the same height um silent but deadly a one honeybee would you like to say something honeybee you said i was silent but deadly i'm trying to be both <laughs> I just like how we haven't even got 60 <laughs> oh seconds in. You haven't even got 60 seconds in and you just found a way to fucking aggravate me. That's got to be a fucking record. Ironically, <laughs> Ron Giku, the original holder of the pissing me off the fastest <laughs> in a podcast, is also here as well. Would you like to say something to the audience, Ron Giku? Oh, this is going to be a blast. Fuck you. Okay, so normally in a two cent <laughs> dial, we all know how this works. I project a thought out essentially into the ether that is the internet and expect nothing in return no likes no subs no comments i just had to get something off my brain and i apparently haven't run out of shit so the next episode essentially is just a continuation of that same entire logic there's been a problem which technically isn't a problem but is perceived as a problem and as we all know with the internet if idiots who hate farm perceive something as an issue they can manifest it into reality the current one is western ugliness or western ugly women there's really no proper way to describe this without it being remotely without it being remotely innocent it's just entirely slanderous and derogatory in every sense of the word um so for the past ooh, we'll say since the inception of horizon zero dawn 2 like before it came out we have been hearing rumblings based on a singular person who is ignorance opinion that games that are not made in Japan and Korea because the entirety of Asia diaspora is only those two places. Characters are purposely made to look unattractive, homely, hideous. Apparently they've looked at Aerith Gainsborough a little bit too much. So essentially um, what's happened is as per usual, hate farmers, have low IQ, ignorant, damn near autistic level, stupid people, which to be fair, I'm just going to flat out apologize to autistic people because I feel like being compared to an idiot is not fair in the slightest. And it's also not exactly true, but nope. Yeah. So fucking here we are dealing with ignorance of hate farmers based on someone telling them something about realistic looking or characters that have a high level of detail based off of their model or their actor however i just want to point this out none of this has been said about men there's been nobody who said wow these male characters all looking ugly when they try to make them hyper realistic why do they do that they're hideous so to say that this problem isn't sexist isn't necessarily a lie and it's not necessarily true so i have a theory on it well, too, and I just, you know, I'm going to ask you all how you feel about it or what you think. Uh, Honeybee, you will be going first. Milk, you will be going second. Or rather, I'm just going to say words to you and then I splash you in later. And Rangiku, you will be going last because I'm positive you will find a way to make me regret not having booze with me at this moment. Um, So the first thing is that hyperrealism has been something that has been obsessed over not just in North America. I don't know if game industry or game companies or particular game designers take it as a challenge, but there are many, many, many companies and people who strive to have their characters look hyper-realistic. Okay? An actor is not necessarily hired for their attractiveness in the world of video gaming. There are many actors who are hired for their attractiveness, whether they're a good performer or not. I'll acknowledge that. That's the same with any performer. Some people are just hired 
because they can do a bare minimum job versus doing an excellent job, but they are extremely without, you know, heavy use of makeup. They are shit staggeringly attractive. So because of this, you might see or hear them more, or you might see someone who can perform better coming out of the voice of someone who can't. It is not something new. It is not something uncommon. So that's the first one. People just forget that a lot of these companies are obsessed with hyperrealism because they see it as some form of a benchmark to potentially get more attention and more sales from the up from uh, marketing departments, or it could be a designer's choice to want to do it. People have consciously made decisions like this before, and I don't know why we're acting like this is new. Now, the second thing a lot of people don't know about, and I only know about this because of me, you know, being on the production staff for an audio dramedy or drama comedy and also an independent game demo. Um, everyone here knows you can buy faces, right? Like you can buy the rights to someone's face, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. More. Okay. So here's the thing. There's two ways to go about it. There is a essentially a rental system. You get the rights to display their face or their image and likeness for X amount of time or on only on certain products relating to certain things that the other person that uh party B or the person whose asset, no pun intended, you're trying to uh, utilize decides on and is agreed upon. Yeah. 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 As I was saying, one of the ways is you have a pre uh, co a pre-made contract that everyone agrees on is contractual obligation to utilize their image and likeness specifically in regards to whatever asset or product that they are featured in or you want them to be featured in. But there's a secondary version, which a lot of people don't realize. There's two choices you can also make. Number one, you can hire someone who already looks like the character, even if they're a voice actor. So you don't have to pay them shit because it's a coincidence. Technically, it's a coincidence. The third option, which is the one I think that people are mis uh, forgetting about, is some of these companies just don't want to pay it, even though they can afford it. So what they do is they take the character, they take their likeness, they make someone who looks like them, but then they do a slight alteration on their face and they're uh, in, in pretty much the uh, above the neck area. And that person's face essentially isn't stolen, but it's copied. And some of the alterations they made are not considered attractive. I'm going to give you one of the best examples I can think of for this. And I'm not, and I, let me just say that I am not saying in any way, shape or form that this this person is Aerith Gainsborough levels of ugly. In fact, quite the opposite. But if you look at the model and how it came out in game, it's almost like they purposely went out of their way to make her less attractive and or as many would call it homely. Now, this is Devil May Cry 5. Trish, take a look at that face. Now. I'm going to show you, hopefully no one has a heart attack, how her face has looked going throughout the entire history of the franchise in both 2D and 3D formats. She's only really been 2D like three times. Now remember, these are none of these with the exception of one is technically based off of an actual person's visage or they claim it, none of them are based off it. Now, let's go take a look at the actual model for a DMC5 Trish. And I don't mean a 3D model, I mean the actual person. Her name is Ariana Diamant, and no, I don't know if I fucked that name up. Now you take a look at this face, and then you go look at DMC5 Trish. They don't even look related, do they? Oof. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it, it's it's very very distinct. It's basically the exact same person, but they went in and they changed her nose and I believe her jawline. That's one of the things you can also do. So, I think that may be what the biggest issue is. These companies don't want to pay a likeness rights because they think they're going to get paid out the ass or they're going to charge out the ass or they just don't think even giving them four figures on top of them just being a face model 
um, is worth any money given. So realistically, I want to pass now that you guys have all the basic information. I want to pass this off to you. And for added measure, I'm just going to throw in the rest of the cast as face models. Because again, Trish is the one that looks the most deviated from. I'm going I'm to I'm just ask you guys point blank. Number one, uh, honeybee. Yeah. Do you think I'm overthinking this? Uh, yes and no. Like there is very much like a clear difference there. Um, I will say this, this Trish model is not... They didn't do this girl justice, I will say. She's gorgeous. She does not look uh, great in this game. And she's the um, only character like that. I know. and But at the same time, you know, just in general, like this, like the character model, she just kind of looks like like some girl on the street. She doesn't look terrible. She just, she just doesn't look... She just doesn't look like a supermodel, you know? She looks fine. Just fine. Yeah, like, I'm not... Now, mind you that the, the, the character model in-game is not a real person, but I'm mm -hmm. not using that as an excuse to, you know, like, be an asshole or be shallow. But as a representation of her, or supposedly her, it really does not match up. And it distinctly is the only one. Yeah, that's, it's not, it's not great. Just kind of looks like a mistake. <laughs> Interesting um, choice of words. Um, I'm okay. trying to be, I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to be. Yeah, I know. It's fine. weird because it, look, it looks so human. It's almost like you don't want to respect it because, well, I guess we're technically nearing the uncanny valley, but that to it's me, that always uncanny seems. uncanny valley. Yeah, to me, that always seems like a shifting goal post. But then again, 8K gaming is around the corner. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, I... I personally think people getting, like, upsetty spaghetti about, like, ooh, ugly women in games. The, those, those people, more often than not, they just haven't seen a woman before up close without makeup. Let's be real. Yeah, and they're they've also never had probably a woman virgins spend the and night. incels. Seems exactly. Likely. They've never they've never had a woman spend the night. That's what that says to me. Yeah, um I I totally agree because Yeah. <laughs> you got to remember most of these people talking shit they're not saying, "Hey, this model this is this model is off." They're saying No. No, if it's made by North Americans, they fucking ugly. Ironically, Devil May Cry is Japanese, which brings up one of the things I'm going to discuss. The first thing out of their mouth which confused some people is that they stated that they wanted the character models to have a different aesthetic they wanted them to look hyper realistic this time i'm like the characters never looked like cartoons what is he talking about yeah it <sighs> yeah i know that was a weird statement yeah yeah just a little bit yeah and it was like That's one of the goofy. first interviews it, and it stuck with me i was like what what did he think that the only person who looked like a damn cartoon almost technically was lady in Double May Cry 4 because she's dressed like a fucking stripper who just went on a Black Friday gun sale. She's wearing a blazer, no bra, nothing under the blazer, just a blazer that's buttoned up with one fucking button. And then she's wearing slack shorts, which I don't know what person thought that was a good idea, but that and then some boots. She's dressed like she's a or some southern strip club i'm sorry yeah it's not great and that's it though no, no yeah. one else like remotely looked like some cartoony character dante acted like one but to be fair he does that um that's just dante, it's dante. Yeah. yeah i mean yeah. wacky woohoo pizza man fits his entire aesthetic mm -hmm. yeah so i i mean I'm, I'm glad you feel that way and i guess that leads into my next question is which of the three situations do you all collectively think it is? You know, obviously starting with Honeybee. Um, do you think that they're just making the models hyper realistic and people are complaining because incels are gonna incels are gonna incel? Or do you think it's more along the lines of people don't understand how licensing deals work? Or they don't really they don't seem to realize that 
they can duck a licensing deal by doing slight modifications to a face and pretty much keep everything else the same. I mean, I would say it's 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 a little of all three kind of rolled into one, but I, I think like most of all, mm-hmm. most of all, I think people are mostly upsetty spaghetti because <laughs> they're used to characters being like very airbrushed and like very pretty all the time, even then they're like, you know, doing these like crazy th- Listen. Gamers, we love them. We are gamers. Um, a lot of us need to touch grass. Just straight up. A lot of us need to go outside, touch the ground, feel some grass a little bit, and then maybe actually go look at like a human female in person and see how they look like. Remind ourselves what human beings look like because we've been staring at screens too long. That's just my take. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I mean, this is going offend some people i hope it offends the right people um fucking i'm well aware that most of my female friends faces do not actually look that old deviant from a lot of my male friends but obviously every guy on the planet with a pulse knows saying hey your face doesn't look feminine to me is usually an insult in oh every single fucking language under the under on the planet so, you know, we naturally know not to say or do some something like that as early as maybe third grade, second grade. And we also understand that feminine, you know, identifiers can be utilized sometimes or most of the time when you're in a situation where somebody is nebulous or what is, I believe, referred to as androgynous as well as ambiguous. And so far, mm-hmm. they've been the things that help me get out of trouble. Like, if I can't figure out what the face is, I hate to say it, I immediately start looking at the ears. Like, what type of earrings do they have on? And, <laughs> hey, I, hey, I got an 80%, I got an 80% success rate, so I'm sticking with it. Um, and, Passing grade. Yeah, and also, you know. Oh, that, better than 50-50. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, sometimes there are even voices that we would consider ambiguous or androgynous, et cetera, et cetera. So. I hate to say it, but humankind needs to remember that we're as much alike as we are, you know, different. And Mm -hmm. because we live in the society that we do, let's be honest, a lot of people don't actually understand human genetics to the same level as certain other countries do, or to the same as someone who's, you know, in their first year of college under learning human genealogy. I can't believe, I, I can't tell you how many times to this day I've had to literally watch one of my Caucasian friends Google that they're the world minority. I was like, why did you think you weren't? No one hid it from you. And then they'll say some stuff like, well, I mean, how do you just know that? I was like, because they said it in science and history class. That being said, uh, officer, um, which option do you think it is? Do you think it's people don't seem to realize how hyper-realistic shit works, especially when you don't use you take off the makeup or do you believe it's something more along the lines of they didn't want to pay for likenesses so they slightly butcher the face so they only had to pay them to you know uh be the body essentially hmm looking at the evidence that you you showed us the actual images comparing you know side by side just to be clear this isn't specifically about devil may cry just so you know yeah but- yeah I, I i'm aware but i'm sure there are probably other games that you can do this for. Yep. I think it's a combination where you have you know, people not you people used to playing video games, and then they see a character design that's intentionally made to be hyper realistic, and they're like, "Whoa, what? That looks so so weird," because they're so used to when they're playing a video game, not seeing that sort of thing. There's that you know that mental disconnect between real life and video game and when they see too much of real life in video game it's like it causes that cognitive distance however i also believe that the companies are doing what they can to uh get these these well-known pretty faces just do some slight alterations and then put it in the game because well People are going to see that and be like, ooh, yay, I like that. For some, at least. Then, of course, there's those who have 
the aforementioned cognitive dissonance. And Trish is such a unique situation too because Trish is not a human being and she can change her skin tone at will. In fact, in Devil May Cry 4, uh, she was in disguise as, a African Amer as an African woman. And in 5, one of her alternate uh, color schemes, one of the only times I've seen it in video games, outside of, you know, evil version of the character, which always gets darker skin if it came from Japan. Not going to go there. But uh... good, not even going to go there. Um, she literally it turned into an African woman. By the way, nobody complains about this, just to be clear. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. She is not a human. She does not fall under our guidelines. But I just find it weird that they took this, let's be honest, let's be frank, even without makeup, let's take this God S who puts practically anybody I'm probably going to meet in the next 10 years to shame. The exact opposite of an Aerith and they said eh and eh, she'll probably cost too much if we get her licensing Eh, let's fuck up her face a little bit I honestly don't think they did that but at the same time I think someone did that and didn't know it I, I, I really can't tell but you know my two cents is over um all right uh Brangiku bring us home what do you think so I'm gonna use um horizon as an example because it's one that i have personal feelings about and the most experience with um corporate greed is a thing it's always been a thing and i have zero doubts that a strong portion of the adjustments that we've seen in visuals does have to do with that in terms of trying not to pay like face models and things like that but I do also think, um, especially because I don't remember if we said it on here, but I think I think you commented on it where Horizon Forbidden West was kind of where we started to really see this yeah. ideology yeah, that's more actually thoroughly where this expressed. Initial idea came from. That was where this initial idea mm -hmm. came from. But I didn't realize how out of pocket, as the kids say, it had gotten until I started seeing like dozens of shit in my feed, like. Oh, Western women are ugly. Western de character design for females is woke. Every time I fucking see that word woke, not only is it not used right, but it's by some asshole trying to hate farm. I mean, the word doesn't even have a proper definition. So how are you going to use it right? So I acknowledge that, you know, corporate greed is almost certainly a hand. However, I do think that a huge portion does go into personal ideologies and not fully understanding going back to the idea of, you know, every time that we see people online, typically there's filters, there's makeup, there's video editing. You do not see celebrities naturally, right? You don't see content creators or internet personalities naturally. There is always something. And hey. you look at how video games are going now and you want to show off, right? You want to show how far technology has come. You look at the screen and I don't even remember what specific... Actually, Horizon was one of them, but during... Um, TGA recently during some of the announcements we were sitting watching these trailers and you can see the pores on these characters skin so there's all of these people throwing a fit about that we're throwing a fit about Aloy she is in a post-apocalyptic world Don't, yeah, the most fact of their that makeup her is literally hair just is like skin paint. Right. There is not makeup. There is like warrior face paint and tattoos and things like that. We are so used to seeing everything done, especially with women, right? Especially with like femme presenting characters. So used to everything being done to create this 
pretty pristine image that we forget the reality of it. And an added thing on top of that that goes more into the claim of it being primarily through Western media. Think about beauty standards and the fetishization that comes from Asian culture. How many people, especially gamers, have a fetishization for Asians and Asian features? So you have people who are being shifted more into. I just, I just like how she's dancing around it. She can't fucking say it. Let me help you. Weeboos. They're weeboos and otakus. Call them what they are. No, it's I. And I'm not dancing around it. I'm specifically not saying it because that it is not confined within that demographic. Fair. Um. Mm, oh my God, no. Oh, so as we have characters whose models are being shifted into more Western expressions of visual... Um, it's shifting away from a lot of like the Asian base that there has been and going into that as well. So I think that that's where the, um, the claim of like, oh, it's specifically with Western games that it's just a mix of not knowing what the fuck is happening and fetishization and all of that. That whole rant is not making it to the channel, but hey, y'all learned something new today. All right, so a way that I look at a lot of the stuff like this, uh, I feel like there's a couple of factors at play here. I feel like kind of everything that you stated is partially to blame for this whole DMC5 situation. Obviously, everybody kind of agrees for that, but the reason I think that is mainly because like, so the, so the first thing is that like, I really do feel like at least a portion of this issue was that they were like, all right, here's the face model. We have the face model. We're good. We're done. We're set. We're cool to go. Um, and then they had an idea for the character as they were trying to make them in DMC five and the two things clashed and they didn't really execute on bridging the gap properly. So they were like, we have a good face model that we really want to use. We also have a really good character that we want to turn this face model into and then just absolutely kind of fucked the execution. And so that led to this kind of result that we have here where like the character looks whitewashed, but I guess in hindsight, I can't really say that because you specifically mentioned that the character is like, she's not a human. She is, you know, she has the ability to shape shift and do all this kind of stuff and can change her skin tone and whatnot. But the execution, at least in the screenshot is like, this is a very, very whitewashed version of the person who is supposed to be a face model for them. So a part of me wants to say that there was just a bit of flubbing that was going on and a little bit of lack of proper execution that occurred here. They had two different ideas and they tried to merge them and they didn't really work all that well. And so now we're left with this. I'm not going to call it a monstrosity because that sounds rude, but we're left with this end result. All right. Um, I've, <laughs> I've also kind of come to the realization that I don't think people actually want accurate representations of characters in video games i think we've just become accustomed to like this very soft looking version of feminine characters we've dealt with this very over sexualized version of female characters and in general people don't actually want quote unquote ugly looking characters at all despite the rhetoric of them wanting kind of hyper realism at the same time there's it, it, it's kind of hypocritical for them to want hyper realism and then not be happy to deal with the consequences of hyper realism that is characters that look below the standard that they would want because we as a society we as a society have over sexualized characters and women in general and that's kind of the nature of it um i mean you know if, if this character is supposed to look like a crackhead then make them look like a crackhead they don't need to be the prettiest character ever if they're supposed to look like a crackhead so if that was the case if this character is supposed to look like a crackhead then maybe the face model choice was a little questionable and they very deliberately had to kind of mess with it toggle it screw it up a little bit to make them look a little bit like a crackhead because they look a little bit like a crackhead only a little bit um i 
when you're asking about how people perceive like you're like do consumers understand like copyright law quote unquote or whatever the official term for it would be I, I don't think most people really know what that is or know what that means or know what implication that has on their games because I, frankly they don't have a reason to they don't really have a reason to look at these kinds of things and be like oh yeah this looks fucked up because they tried getting this face model, but because of the rules surrounding using them as a face model, they couldn't. Because most people don't even know what that means. I'm not a person who's heavily invested into this kind of thing, and so that's why I didn't know about it. You obviously are much more knowledgeable about it because that's a thing that you consistently have to work with with working on an indie project. But especially gamers and general consumers aren't really going to know about that, so I definitely don't think people think that to be the case, but I can definitely understand it being a problem. Um, I, uh, you know, I think it's one thing to basically notice that characters fall into the uncanny valley territory. I also think it's appropriate to say, hey, why do these characters look so much different from their, from their face model counterpart, be it in this case with DMC5 with one character, or if you have a situation like that occurring with every character where no character in a video game looks very true to their, um, to their face model equivalent and whatnot. But I think to immediately slander the face models and calling them ugly because they're not stylized a certain way or airbrushed or anything is pretty disrespectful to them. And then to take that logic and apply it to an entire region of the continent, that's kind of when your bias and your sort of degeneracy has shown its true colors. And you've, sh you've sort of shown that there's a certain type that you were looking for and you were almost trying to pick these characters and their facial features like it's matchmaker. And I don't really think I agree with that. Um, I don't know. The, probably the biggest example of when it was used was, uh, in, from what I saw, was from like the MJ face model for Insomniac Spider-Man 2, where they fucking just tore her apart. And now she's not a face model anymore because they just fucking ruined it. Uh, I'm also willing to believe at the end of the day that these models were at least intentionally butchered a little bit because in the most pessimistic move that I've ever pulled... I, I feel like most big box game companies are greedy as hell. I don't know anything about the team responsible for DMC5 in the first place, but I'm never surprised when a big game company or even a small game company pulls some kind of shady shit. So I don't know. I think that's where I kind of stand with that whole situation. Uh, I'll be sure to splice that in. But right now we're going to transition into possibly our shortest podcast episode ever.